Okay, this is going to be fun. In this video, I'm gonna ask you a really simple question. We're gonna do some very basic calculations. We're gonna meet a big number. Your brain is going to explode, and at the end of it, you'll have a fantastic party trick. And it all comes down to this, a deck of cards. Here's my simple question for you. How many different ways can you shuffle a deck of cards? Often with these sort of questions, it's better to start with a simpler version of the question and work your way up. So let's say there were only three cards in a deck. How many different ways can I shuffle a deck of three cards? Take a few seconds to think about it yourself. How many different ways can I arrange three playing cards? Most of the time when I ask people this question, they come up with one of two answers. A very popular answer is, well, there's three cards and there's three positions you could put each of them in and three lots of three is nine. I can see where that thinking comes from. It's not correct. Think of it instead this way. Some card has to come out first in my deck, yes? How many choices have I got for the first possible card? I've clearly got three. Once I choose a first card, let's say the three of hearts, how many possible cards could I choose to come second? That's right, there's two. So once I've chosen one of my three possible cards and one of my two possible second cards, how many cards are left to be the last card of the deck? There's only one. So the number of ways I could arrange a deck of three cards is three multiplied by two, multiplied by one. There's six possible combinations. Take a second and make sure that makes complete sense to you. So now let's say we had a deck, not of three, but of four cards. How many ways can we shuffle a deck of four cards? We follow exactly the same logic. Whichever shuffle I choose, whichever way the cards come out, there's four possible cards that could go first. Once I've chosen one of the four possible cards for first, I've got three possible cards that could be the second card in my deck. Once I've had four possible first cards, run them through three possible second cards, I'm choosing from two different cards to go third in my deck. So in my particular arrangement, choosing from four possible first cards, running them through three possible second cards and two possible third cards will always leave only one possible card to come last. By extension of the logic we use for three cards, you should be able to see that a deck of four cards can be arranged four times three times two times one, 24 different ways. Again, if that's not entirely clear, take a second, watch the video again, and see that you can understand a deck of four cards can come out 24 ways. Now, as our deck of cards just gets bigger and bigger, can you see that a deck of five cards would be five times four times three times two times one? A deck of nine cards, nine times eight times seven times six, dot, 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 down to one. Can you see that this sort of number, a whole number multiplied by all the whole numbers below it down to one, is the sort of mathematical calculation that would occur quite often when you're doing the maths of counting things, in this case, an order of cards. But it could be how many different ways could a number of people line up in a row? How many different ways could you pick books off a shelf in a library? This branch of mathematics called combinatorics often comes up with these sort of counting situations. In fact, we see numbers like four times three times two times one, or six times five times four times three times two times one. So often in mathematics, we use one of our nice little shorthands to save us writing down all the numbers. Four times three times two times one is written as four with this weird exclamation mark after it and pronounced four factorial. For any counting number n, n factorial is defined as n multiplied by n minus one, multiplied by n minus two, multiplied by all the counting numbers down to one. And it's the beauty of factorials that helps us answer the question, how many ways can you shuffle a deck of cards? A quick side note on shuffling a deck of cards. I've got this deck fresh out of the box in its traditional order. All the suits, all the letters, all the numbers in their order. Just notice this, if I give it a good old lame couple of hand shuffle, haven't really changed that much at all. 
there's still long stretches of numbers that haven't changed out of the order they were originally in the deck. Look, eight, nine, 10, jack, queen, king of clubs all together. The only way I can really shuffle a deck of cards is not muck around. I need to do something like this. And you can break a deck up like that and that and that and that. Again, you're not really doing anything. You might've seen in a casino. This is the way you shuffle cards. Like I said, a couple of simple shuffles won't get the job done. Put your deck down, break it up, go one better, spread it out everywhere like you might've seen done in a casino. And don't be afraid to get your hands a little bit dirty. Move them around, pick up bits, put that there, put that there, keep going, going, going. And after a minute or so, you can be confident you've genuinely shuffled that deck. So having shuffled my deck of cards, how many different ways could this have come out? Well, you should know there are 52 cards in a deck. There are 13 cards in each suit. There are four suits. Four 13s are 52. So as I shuffle a deck of cards, there are, by extension of exactly the same argument we used before, 52 possible cards that could come out first in my deck. Once I've chosen one of those 52 possible cards, there are 51 that could come out second, 50 that could come out third, 49 that could come out fourth, all the way down to the 52nd and last card for which there is only one choice. So by the use of the notation earlier, in the same way that a deck of three cards can be shuffled three factorial, that's six ways, and a deck of four cards can be arranged four factorial, that's 24 ways. A deck of 52 cards can be arranged 52 factorial ways. Now, before I go and tell you what 52 factorial is, ask yourself, how many different ways do you think you could shuffle a deck of cards? Well, there's 52 cards, so I think we all agree a deck of cards could easily come out a hundred different ways. What about a thousand different ways? 10,000? A million? A billion? Could I shuffle a deck of cards a trillion ways? Take a moment and think to yourself, have a rough guess, how many different ways do you think a deck of cards could come out? You see, in my experience, when I ask this question to groups of people, somewhere between a billion and a trillion is where people start tapping out, going, yep, that'll do. I don't even really understand those numbers. Please stop asking me the question. It turns out a trillion is just a small step down the road to the number of different ways you can shuffle a deck of cards. Watch this. So to work out this magical number 52 factorial, most of us need to look no further than our phones. The calculator on your phone that I'm sure you use quite regularly, well, you might not have known that if you turn it on its side and you get all these amazing functions, all I need to do here is put in 52, go to the X factorial button, and I get this beautiful beast of a number. 8.065817517E to the 67. What's going on here? If you haven't seen our video yet on massive numbers and index notation, you might want to have a quick look. But this E67 is telling us the number 52 factorial begins with an eight, followed by a zero and a six and a five and an eight. But all told after the eight, there are 67 digits worth of numbers. That's right. 52 factorial is 60 eight digits long. Hate to interrupt. Would you prefer uninterrupted indulgence? Head to findqualia.com to access the entire series by comedian, broadcaster, and mathematician Adam Spencer, completely ad-free. Now that can freak people out a little bit. It's massively more than a billion, which is only one with nine digits after it, or a trillion, one with 12 digits afterwards. We're talking millions of millions of billions of billions more than the sort of numbers most people guess you could arrange a deck of cards. But when you think about it, it's actually not that surprising that 52 factorial is that large. I mean, once you get above 10 factorial and multiply by 11 or 12 or 13, Every number you're multiplying by is bigger than 10. So of course the answer, the factorial, is getting at least one digit longer every time. And from 10 all the way up to 52, well, you're doing that 43 times. 
So that's 43 digits long at an absolute minimum. But when you're multiplying by 20s, you're effectively multiplying by 10 and 2. 30s is 10s and 3s. 40s is 10s and 4s. If you think about it, yeah, 52 factorial does have to be something like 68 digits long. But let's try and get our head around what that number actually means. Is there any way we can represent or picture in our minds the number of ways you can shuffle a deck of cards? I think there is, but I think it's going to blow your mind. Let's check it out. So the number of ways of shuffling a deck of cards, 52 factorial, which was roughly 8 06 times 10 to the 67. Remember what that means. The number starts with an 8 and an 0, a 6. And after the 8, there are 67 digits of numbers. 1, 2, 3, 4. There'd still be another 63 digits, which I'm approximating here just as zeros. Near enough will be good enough. I'm going to write these zeros in groups of nine. Why am I doing that? Because one with nine zeros after it is a billion. So each of these rows of zeros I'm writing here increases the size of our number by a factor of a billion. I want to write 63 zeros in groups of nine. One, two, three, four, five, six nines are 54. Seven nines are 63. So this number here is a pretty good estimate of the number of ways you can shuffle a deck of cards. So let's say there wasn't just me shuffling the card. Let's say there were one million people shuffling decks of cards. And we didn't just have a single deck of cards. Let's say all one billion of us had a billion decks of cards. And these billion people with a billion decks of cards didn't just shuffle each deck once. The billion people with the billion decks of cards shuffled each deck a billion times. And we didn't just do that for one day. A billion people with a billion decks of cards shuffled each of those billion decks a billion times every day for a billion years. 365 days, a billion years, we'd have a 365. Now comparing the 365 to the 806, I'm gonna say very roughly, that does. So if a billion people took a billion decks of cards and shuffled them every day, a billion times a day for a billion years, if every one of those shuffles came out differently and we put them all in a box, to understand how many different ways you can shuffle a deck of cards, you'd get roughly this many boxes. Let's try and put this still ridiculously large number in some sort of context. How many drops of water are there in all the oceans on Earth? I've seen a few different numbers quoted for this. Depends on your definition of the size of a drop and that sort of stuff, but they have roughly 25 zeros after the first digit. So let's take away 25, 9, 18, 20, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. So, if a billion people took a billion decks of cards and shuffled those billion decks of cards a billion times each every day for a billion years, and we put all of those shuffles that came out differently into a box and thought of that box as one drop of water in an ocean, we would need this many, something up to maybe 20,000 planet Earths to capture all those drops of water, let me say that again. If a billion people shuffled a billion decks of cards a billion times each every day for a billion years and all of those shuffles came out differently and we put them all in a box, that box is one drop of water in all the oceans of anything up to 20,000 planet Earths. That's how many different ways you can shuffle a deck of cards. So let's recap. The number of ways this deck of 52 cards could have come out is 52 factorial. That's a 68 digit long number. To try and get it in perspective, if instead of just one deck of cards, 
I had a billion decks of cards and there were a billion of me and I shuffled them all a billion times a day, every day for a billion years. And all those shuffles came out differently and we put them in a box. That box would be one drop of water in all the oceans on about 20,000 plus planet Earths. That's how many different ways a deck of cards can come out. And that's why I am confident to the point of certainty that this individual arrangement of a deck of cards that I just created has never happened before in the history of the universe and will never happen again. Pause to think about how beautiful it is. You can stop at a newsagent's on the way home, buy a deck of cards, spend two minutes on a table shuffling them and be pretty much certain you've created something that the universe will never see again. That, my friend, is the power of factorials.